Hello and welcome back to Two Chicks in a Horror Flick. I just wanted to do it a little different this time. I'm Tawny Ray. <laughs> I liked that. I actually liked that. It was, it was, it was, oh, and I'm Felicia Connor. But it was <laughs> like more, uh, like we're going to talk about something serious tonight. I slowed it down a little bit. I liked it. I liked that. Thank you. It was fun. It was very intentional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, last up today, tonight, for this month. For Father's Day ish month. Last up. <laughs> is, we've, we've had a bunch of them tonight. No, I was kidding. Sorry, go ahead. No, I just mean for the month, yeah. Is Insidious, which was your guys' pick whoop, whoop. up against what was it? The Wailing. The Wailing. Cargo. Cargo. And the Clove Hitch Killer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm both shocked and not shocked that this won. I thought the Wailing stood a really good chance, but here we are. I really wanted to see the whaling. Not that I don't want to see your guys' pick. Um, I wanted to see that too. And I really wanted to see the whaling. And I wanted to see the clove hitch killer. I'm glad you didn't pick cargo because that was the one. (laughs) It was really dad focused, but it was probably the one that I wanted to see the least out of all of them. Mm. Um, What else was I going to say? Have you seen this? No. You haven't seen this movie? I thought I had seen it. No. No, I hadn't seen this because as I was watching it, I don't, I don't remember any single part of this. Okay, interesting. I'm excited for mm-hmm. this conversation even more than I was before. Okay. Because I thought you had seen it. Yeah, no. Okay. Okay, so before we get into that, what are you drinking? I am drinking whiskey, neat, little book. It's called mm. Little Book. It's a good one. That was the one you had last time? I did for have a little book episode? last time. Yeah. You're right. I did. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Remember. Which, actually, Shining, that was Little Book. Shining, he wants to be an mm. author. That was kind of a... <laughs> Ooh, relevant. <laughs> relevant. What are you what are you drinking? I've got a Truly again today. I got a Lemon Truly. It's okay. I got the Citrus Pack. Not my fave. Not my fave. But the Grapefruit one was okay. I don't even like Grapefruit, but... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what else is new? Anything that you've been watching? New, new... Oh, yes. So I have been binging hardcore... The Good Place. Oh, yeah. I've never seen it. And I was sitting there with TT one day, one evening, and I wanted something playing in the background that was not YouTube and was not like a gamer on YouTube. And so I was like, oh, The Good Place. I remember Tawny said this was good. Well, by the end of uh, five episodes, me and TT were like... (laughs) bought into this show and at the end of it she's like wow I like that show and I'm like honey do you know what's happening and she's like no (laughs) (laughs) so I gave her a you know little recap of a really basic what's happening she's like oh I get it and so then the next night um with Steve I was like well we've been watching the show you want to check it out gave him a recap of what just happened and now he is every night like, hey, want to watch an episode of The Good Place? Yes. yes. It's really, there's just something, I don't know. I really, I like the characters. I like all the characters. It's fun. It's so, it's like one of my favorite comedic shows. And yeah. we, we know, you know, we've had this conversation several times. I'm not a fan of comedy shows in general. But yeah, it's so funny and so good. And the message is good. And the, I just, yeah, it's top notch. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Other than that, nada. Mm, I haven't okay. just, you know, that chapter. <laughs> I'm up to date. <laughs> of course. That's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, How about you? Speaking of comedy, mm. I was going to say, Dave is back. It's the show about Little Dicky. I think I've already mentioned this before. Okay. Um. So there was one season was that I FX drunk? did. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> it was on one of our, I think it was on our uh wrap-up episode where we talked about like all the fucking things that we had watched all year oh that one 2020 uh is it called dave is back or it's called dave dave okay gotcha just dave and uh yeah so it's about little dicky and the season season two just premiered on hulu so there's only two episodes so far but fuck i love this show it's so who's little dicky funny he's a rapper Oh, shit. It's all coming to me now. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. Very funny. And also, like, some of it is, like, because I feel like season one starts off pretty funny, and then it gets, like, kind of real. 
And so there's definitely like a, a mix of those two tones. But anyway, very excited about that. And I just recommend that everybody check it out. It might not be for you, but you might like it. And then we watched all of Sweet Tooth, which everybody I feel like was raving about on Netflix. <gasps> what did, I haven't seen it because TT watched it with her grandma when we were visiting. Uh, what did you think? I haven't seen it yet. I'm not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put myself in the fan category. It was weird. It's one of those, <laughs> it's one of those things that tonally it's all over the place for me. I, I don't get it. It's really dark and it's also really juvenile at the same time. There's some really weird kid like stuff. And then there's some really dark shit. And I just don't know like who this show is intended for. And some of it's good. Some of the characters are good. It's just really hit or miss. So I don't know. That's kind of where I landed. Also, though, let me just say Black Summer's Back, which is a zombie show. Okay. And I like we liked the first season. We just started watching the second season, and it's very exciting. I think I like it. I just I have to like get back in the mindset of what this show is like because it's really fucking intense. <laughs> it's like Black Summer. Yeah. What where what is that on? Netflix. Netflix. Okay, cool. And then last thing that I just wanted to mention was. Behind her eyes. Behind her eyes. Thank you. Yes. yes. That was crazy. And I'm not going to say anything about it because I don't want to ruin anything. But man, it was not what I was expecting and also what I was expecting at the same time. It was weird. And I just check it out. Short. Yeah. It was, well, kind of short. Six up. I watched it all at once. I just binged it. Whole thing one, at one time. And I liked it personally. So good. I liked it too. The book was phenomenal. So if you're more of a book reader, read the book. I like recommended that book to everybody. I was because at the end of the book, I was like, oh, shit. I love that. I love that when that happens to me. Yes. I liked yeah. it too. Yeah. Well, you know what else we watched? We watched Luca. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Disney Luca. So cute. It looks pretty cute. So cute. I'm telling you. Really good little flick. Go watch Where, that for some heartwarming shit. Was that on Disney Plus? It is on Disney Plus, and it's if you have Disney Plus, it doesn't cost money. You know, not like that Cruella one where we had to pay. Fucking <laughs> Cruella. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we like that. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna call one last thing. I promise. I'm gonna call out my <laughs> new neighbor. I won't call out her name just in case, but she would love it. So maybe I'll just say it because she wants to be on our show. She's so oh, excited. Yeah, say it. She's so excited when she found out that um, I that we did this podcast. So her name is Kayla. And she's like, oh, my God, I love murder. I'm so excited that you guys do a, a show about scary movies because I love murder. And then she's like, well, that probably came out wrong. No. And then she's like, Felicia, what is your favorite murder? <laughs> gosh it was fun all right that's did you have an fun. answer What's uh, your favorite no murder? i said it was really difficult to say and then yeah. i asked her if she saw um it i don't know if i have a favorite murder but i know what she meant murder story um yeah or like case that i probably do like ones that oh shit i don't know i don't know that's i, I said i don't know I did ask her, though, did you see the Netflix series? Because that was really, really good. And it was curious and uh, very, very interesting. Just Which that one? case in general. Uh, oh, I didn't even say what it was. Night Stalker. Yeah, okay. I thought I said it. I said it in my head. I also thought out. that's what you were talking about. I just wanted to double check. Yeah, I could read yeah. your mind, obviously. Yeah. But there's, yeah, there's a, a lot of good ones out there. <laughs> that's shitty to say. I really wish nobody got murdered. But. Yeah, obviously. Uh, you know. That's just a fact of life, and sorry. Yeah, and if it's I ever just us. get murdered, I hope my murder story is your favorite. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was weird. It no, wouldn't I, be. <laughs> I do hope that people pour over the details <laughs> after I die and try to figure out who murdered me. That if that mm. ever happens to me, <laughs> yeah, find him. No, no. Avenge me. <laughs> Avenge me for sure. Hopefully, it's real clear cut hopefully it doesn't happen obviously hopefully i never want it to happen <laughs> no one is murdering okay let's move on it's going down <laughs> it's a rabbit hole okay. it's going down a rabbit hole we do have some exciting news oh, we have yes. some patreon patron shout outs today do, 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 do. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. We should maybe come up with a thing. Like a if little. We had some music. Yeah. Six. I don't know. Some music that'd be cool. I don't know. <laughs> but... Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to start off, I'll do two. You do two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. <laughs> We've I got everything twice. <laughs> We've got Jess with Horror Movie Crew. Do, 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 do. <laughs> horror Movie Crew. There's And I'll just say Josh also with Horror Movie yes. Crew. So if you haven't checked out their podcast, they are fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. I consider them our podcast sister, brother? Well, both. Well, our pro- yeah, our podcast sibling, ne- I should just say. Yeah, yeah. Gender neutral. Our sister podcast, I feel like. You know, like when you go to a school and they yeah. have a sister school. Sister, I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Let me love them. They are the greatest of mm-hmm. all time. And if you like us and listening to our podcast, you're going to love them. So go check them out. Um, Seth is also a part of that podcast, but he's not a patron, so we're not shouting him out technically. But I'm just going to give him an honorable mention, obviously, because he's fucking the best, too. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then we have two more best, right? Yes. We have the infamous Michael from We Love Horror. He is a Patreon. Thank you, Michael, so much. He's so beloved. Everyone loves Michael, and they should. He's an, just an amazing human being, and we just love, 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 love that he's our friend. And then we have Mark from a podcast on Elm Street. I didn't even know he really liked us that much. <laughs> <laughs> So excited. Another great podcast. And thank you so much, Mark. I was excited when when I saw um, saw those uh, patrons come through. Super honored and really yes. glad that you love our show. Thank you guys so much for your support. You're incredible. All of those podcasts are amazing. You should check mm-hmm. all of them out. Thank you guys again for your support. We really appreciate it. You're the fucking best. Okay. Are we doing it? Are we getting into this? Yeah, we're doing it. We're getting into it. We're doing it. And what yeah. we are doing is we're talking about the movie Insidious from 2010. Yes. The director is James Wan. And I thought I would note here, too, that the writer is Lee Winnell, who also wrote The Invisible Man from 2020 and Saw. And he oh. was in Saw. If you remember, oh. you might have recognized him in this movie, Felicia, did you? Could you spot Lee Winnell? Um, was he the really big guy with the light? No. <laughs> small guy? He was a small one. Yeah. Oh. No, I didn't recognize him at all. Short. I guess shorter guy. Uh, yes. The, the shorter guy, sorry. He was in Saw? Uh, yes. He was Adam from Saw. From the bathtub, Adam? Yes. Yeah. Oh, shit, no. I did not put that together. Didn't? Okay. Mm-mm. I guess he looks really different, but... And he does, in my opinion, a much better job of acting in this movie than he did Saw. Because yeah. that was shaky. Still yeah. not great, I feel like, in this movie, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, better, yeah. better than Saw, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so anyway, we'll go into the cast. We got Patrick Wilson, who played Josh Lambert. Rose Byrne, who played Renee Lambert. Ty Simpkins, who was the son, Dalton Lambert. Snugglebug. He had a cute face. Sorry. Oh, okay. He was cute. like, <laughs> he was cute. <laughs> Got it. And uh, Lynn Shea, who played Elise Rainier. Lynn Shea, also known as, she's in every horror movie ever made since the dawn of time, apparently. <laughs> she's everywhere. And also, the family had like two other kids, but I didn't write down who they are because they're like kind of insignificant and they have like wow. maybe three lines. I they, mean, they the did baby. a really great job of not. Really Mattering. including those children, <laughs> even though they existed. <laughs> you know, I will say, though, the baby, and I'm maybe jumping a little bit ahead here, though, the baby set the fucking tone. Stressful. Just immediately I was on edge, stressed, because mm. for the first half of this movie, she just cries through it. And it's very, I hate it. I Phenomenal hate it. actress. Great job. <laughs> you baby. <laughs> you know what TT says whenever we go out and a baby cries? Ugh. I hate the sound of baby crying. I hate yeah. the sounds of babies crying. My I feel that TT says that. <laughs> <laughs> are you like <laughs> Are you like, yeah, it wasn't that long ago since you were a fucking baby yeah. crying. Pretty much that's sounds how I the feel. same mm. times ten when you whine. Okay. A little Let's hypocritical of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. <sighs> so the box office, mm-hmm. no, sorry, budget for this was one point five million. Box office was ninety nine million. Holy shit! They did good. Yeah, that's like tell what? me this. Tell me the scores. 100%? That's like Fold? a lot per cents. That's yeah. a lot. Who knows? We don't That's do a math lot here. Percents, dude. <laughs> so many percents. What were you going to say? <laughs> so many percents. I'm really curious what it was rated. Here we go. IMDb gave it a 6.8 out of 10. Okay. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 66%, so pretty close. Okay. And an 89% of Google users like this movie. Okay. I do feel like the Google users are is always higher than the other scores i guess people just as an audience are less picky or maybe easily scared maybe easily more scared yeah less um or maybe there's just more of them so it kind of trends Mm. higher potentially there's a lot of google users are you ready for two minutes with time i'm ready for it here we go dalton astral projects himself into a coma after moving into a suspicious house with his family His mom, Renee, wants to move pretty immediately, and they do what almost no horror movie family ever does, move to a new house, because they think there's a haunting. But the weirdness doesn't stop. So she calls for some backup, Josh's mom, Lorraine. She also has a vision of a red-faced demon, so she calls in her backup, Elise, who's a medium. It's revealed, though, that Elise helped Josh himself with the same problem when he was a kid and is the only person who can go into the astral plane and bring Dalton back. He does this, tries, but separates from Dalton, and a demon takes over his body. But Dalton wakes up, so that's cool. The end. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, nice. That was great. And that was under a minute. That must be like 10 seconds of time. And that was everything. No, not that fast. 20 seconds. That was really good. Thank you. Yeah, that was it was good. most of it. I mean, it was a long movie. Was it? That's only like it's an hour long and 40? Enough. It's yeah. Long enough. An hour and 40 minutes, dude. <laughs> I'm just saying that's like average. I, it's like usually movies are like an hour yeah. and 30 minutes. <clears throat> yeah, an hour and 30. Yeah, yeah. Felt yeah. long. Okay. okay. I mean, I don't disagree uh, necessarily. But, okay, so having said all that... Felicia, how did you feel about this movie? Okay, guys. I didn't hate it. But I didn't love it. There were a couple of things that I liked. And then some things that I didn't. But it wasn't to the level of where I felt irritated or tired or wished it was over or anything like that. You know, not to that level. Okay. Even though you just said you felt like it was long? Um, oh yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a really good point. No, I had paused it because I watched it in my bedroom and when TT comes in to the master death, kiss of death for these movies for you. I know. I know because I have that TV, but I didn't think it looked super weirdly real. Like some movies. Okay. I mean, maybe, maybe that's why the, those ghosts were not scary to me. You know, but not all ghosts are scary, I guess, you know, but TT went to the bathroom and so she'll open my bedroom door and go, mom, pause the movie. So she can't hear (laughs) it. Um, And when I paused it, I was like, man, we've already been watching this for like an hour and 40 minutes, I think it was, or something like that. I'm like, how long is this movie? Shit. But it didn't feel super long. It was just that moment. Yeah. I'm sorry. I interrupted you, but keep going. No. Okay. You want me to... Yeah, that's how I felt. Okay. Like, I felt like, um, I felt like the very first time I saw, well, we probably don't want to get into, I could tell you what I like, but maybe I should let you say how you feel before we, like, get into it. Yeah, I could do just a quick thing, then we'll get into details. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Um, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Yeah, why don't you tell me how you feel? I feel... Exactly the same way. Like I don't. Oh my gosh! Thank God because I was so worried you're gonna go. I fucking love this movie, and I was like, "Fuck <laughs> no." <laughs> I do remember. I have seen this though before. I have seen okay. it. Okay. Like probably right when it came out, and I remember liking it more than I did this watch. I think it didn't age well. Like I, mm. 
I don't know. I remember kind of walking away from it the first time and not liking it as much as other people did. Like, I remember feeling like, okay, I don't agree with this, uh, you know, the hype that it's getting necessarily. But I didn't hate it. I thought there was a few, like, good tricks in there and, you know, good scary gags that they had and stuff. And I, I felt like it was fresh. But now, watching it, I'm like, nah. It's It looks cheap. Which it is cheap. It's a low-budget movie as mm. far as the spectrum of movies go. So I guess that kind of makes sense. And it's like, I have to sort of dial back my criticism in a way that I'm like, okay, I guess it, I'm, it's like admirable what was done on a short, small budget, but like, I just, I don't know. I'm real lukewarm on it. Yeah. I'm lukewarm too, because we've watched things that were also old and low budget that we liked a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, cool. All right, so let's get into it. Um, the things I liked, I'm just going to start with that because there was a few. Um, only a few. Okay. <laughs> I, I, um, I liked Rose, the mom. I really felt her sense of dread and despair and loneliness and hopefulness. Hope, hopelessness. Less. Sorry, hopelessness. I really... Like, she did that really well. God, I was exhausted. I was fucking pissed at him for, like, even though he's tired and sleeping at school, it's not like he was cheating on her. Still, fuck you. Get home. There's a, you know, you're tired because you work as a teacher and now you got to get home and fucking deal with the ghosts and the kids. You know what I mean? Like, she's all day working with the kids and dealing with ghosts. So get the fuck home. And wow, that's a really nice couple of houses they moved into on that teacher's salary. But <laughs> <laughs> let me just take this opportunity to bitch because <laughs> as somebody who has been looking for houses unsuccessfully, much disappointment for like, what, six, eight weeks or something at this point, I was like, how are these motherfuckers going to move into two you two, two and then you moved out of the first did you sell that you got paid capital gains now on that like what the <laughs> fuck okay no <laughs> who's mad about it and now you're in the second nobody no i almost was like mad in in one breath i want to say that i liked the fact that they moved right because it's it just goes against what other movies do normally they end up staying and somebody's like i don't believe you <laughs> it's not haunted so I like that they moved, but on the other hand, like just from a realistic point of view, I was like, fuck off. How much money? That's your fucking trust fund babies. <laughs> yeah, literally, because I agree. I liked that they moved. When they moved, I went, oh, shit, they moved. I think I have it in my notes. They actually moved. That's awesome. Um, and then They when should they have mo moved to a shack, though. When they were moving into the house, I'm like, damn, teachers are doing good in that state. <laughs> Whatever state he's in. <laughs> Uh, okay. So yes, I liked her. Um, I, I mean, I thought she did a good job. I liked the first time when she went in and the face is behind the, like the curtain where yes. the baby was sleeping. Yes. That creeped me out. I thought that was creepy. And then the first time you see the red face by the dad. So when they're all talking, yeah. And then you see it, I literally got under my covers. Like, I legit was, oh, the covers will protect me. I felt really gross. Like, creeped out. So creeped out gross. Like, oh, my God. But then um, that was it. Like, the big, strong ghost, not scary. I mean, I think it's cool that the one chick killed her family and they kind of played that out. The ghosts, you know, but that was not scary. Um, I didn't like when the red demon guy became humanistic, like he was sharpening his metal fingers. Oh, and yeah. He, I he did had, not. Yeah, it was like, okay, that's not great. I had com I completely forgot about that. So I was watching it now the second time, and I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't remember any of this. This is, it got crazy. And especially with the beginning of that shot. The, the shot, we have the camera come out of the fucking... What is that called? Uh, the there's like a record playing with the yeah with the horn. Thank you. I don't know the what it's horn called. Horn thing that comes out of the old it is fashioned not, record players. Yes, not coming yeah. to me, but it comes out of that mm -hmm. to show him in this like workshop, like sharpening his claws. I also was like, what in the fuck? 
<laughs> where the fuck did we just go? Like, this is... Now we're zany. He's like right? Geppetto from Pinocchio or something. What there was the like fuck? this Geppetto vibe. There was marionettes and... Oh, yeah. Like... What the fuck? I don't know. It, in <sighs> his face, he was like being all weird and like... Ugh, I don't know. I did like... Sorry, the like. I liked the um, idea of the movie. I like yeah. the whole thing about astral travel. I find very fascinating. And so what happens if you travel too far? Um, and I, it was believable in the sense that you can, I, I truly believe you can astral travel too. So you astral travel and then that element of, okay, your body's there. And then if they're spirits, of course they want to live again. So I really liked all of that. I thought that that was a great storyline. Um, and then these three characters that I really liked, the, the Elise was her name, right? Yep. And her two sidekicks. I liked them as characters, but was like, oh, wait a second. Are we watching a horror comedy? I literally yes. paused for a moment and went, oh, is this supposed to be, am I watching this movie the wrong way? Is this supposed to be a comedy? It was disjointed. Even though I liked them, it was zany to use Tommy's word. It was totally zany. Even when they were sitting to do this really intense thing and go get the, the boy back from astral travel, she puts this gas mask on that's hooked up mm. to the guy's ear. It was all zany. So I was confused if I was supposed to be scared or not. First of all, just before I forget, yeah. so that I, 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 let me just complain about this gas mask. I fucking hated it. I was like... <laughs> She pulled it's it out. So stupid. Again, I for, I forgot about this. I didn't even remember this part of the movie, but she pulls it out and I was like, "Oh, fuck, and here we go." I hate this kind of shit. It's over the top. It's very like um steampunk. Like, why? Why do we ha And then it doesn't even actually make any sense. If she were to whisper, you can't hear that whisper probably better in this like weird tube. Uh, fucking get me two cans and a string then. I don't know. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> Fuck off. That was so, like, I don't know, just, like, uh, just dumb. I don't even yes. have the words for it. I just hated it. Anyway, just before I forgot, I needed to say that. But the other thing is I wanted to mention about these guys. I agree that, like, it's not that I disliked them. It just felt tonally, like, way off from the rest of the movie. Like, as soon as they're introduced, you're like, oh, this is funny now? And I feel like it was almost, this movie was a template for The Conjuring, in a way, tonally. Because I feel like it works so much better in that movie. Because gotcha. it's the ki same kind of setup. It's like you've got this medium and her husband, who is Patrick Wilson also. So I think that's sometimes people get these movies mixed up. Because not only is Patrick Wilson in both, but in The Conjuring, his wife is Lorraine. And in this movie, his mom is Lorraine. They're not the same person, obviously, but they have the same name. So it's like just a little... Confusing. So it's almost like he wrote this story, or I don't know who wrote it, but whatever. The story was created, they made a movie out of it, and then they took the story back to the drawing board and tweaked it. So, <laughs> and yeah. made it better. I do think I do think that that must be part of it, right? And I think I did read something about there being sort of some conjuring uh the one of the notes on IMDB was like not very specific, but it was like there's some, you know, breadcrumbs, I guess, of the conjuring in this movie and the movie series because I think they were being developed at the same time or maybe close together but I just feel like The Conjuring hits it better tonally than this movie because you are sort of confused you're like oh okay what is happening now and it's a small small part of the movie anyway I'm sorry keep going no you're absolutely right I I literally stopped and thought I've been watching this movie wrong it's a comedy and I haven't been picking up the comedy this whole time. <laughs> that's what I thought. And then I thought back and I'm like, no, I don't think that's it. And then the ghosts, I know that not all ghosts are scary. But just a little boy running through the house. And I just was like, I don't know. It was like too much. It was almost like uh, I can picture this uh, Beetlejuice-esque. Okay, yeah. It wasn't that ridiculous, but with the ghosts and the, okay, it was nothing like Beetlejuice, but I'm just saying the ghosts wise. I, I get what you're what saying, saying though. No, okay, good. I, like, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm on the same wavelength because it is, it's, it's kind of wacky in a way. Like yeah. you've got this, these kind of weird, one of the things that I don't love about this movie 
not to jump in there. I, I want to also talk about things that I liked, but like I, there's something about this movie visually that I just don't like. And I can't, I really had a hard time today and I can't identify this. So if you think, you know, our listeners, please let me know what you think it is. Cause usually I have a good sense of this, like what it feels like. And I just couldn't fucking put my finger on it today, but the whole movie is very dark and blue and mm-hmm. there's a lot of handheld camera work and wide lenses, like almost fisheye lenses. Yeah. And I yep. was like, I was like, there's just something about this that doesn't fit for me. And I don't know if it's because I feel like it should be funny based on the, the handheld camera work or if it's so dark and cold feeling from the blue tones because it is kind of a dark, scary movie, but I just feel like the the content and the story doesn't match that yet. Like, it would make sense for me once they go into the further that it's really dark and blue. But it's like that throughout the entire movie, so I'm like, I don't know, there's just something that doesn't land. And in the beginning part of the movie, to your point, it's not... it fe- Because of those things, it feels very serious. It feels very ominous and, like, yeah. heavy and, like... Yikes. But then you have these bumbling dudes roll in and you're like, oh, is this a horror comedy? Hold on. So yeah, because their kid is in a coma. It is. It's really dark and stressful and depressing. And then these guys come in. So why weird. did the little boy even fall off the ladder to begin with? Because when she was in there, do you remember earlier in the movie? She like she was like fucking around on the ladder and it broke. Yeah. No, I mean, like, what was the point of him? If he already astral travels on a regular basis. Oh, yeah. A good question. I don't know. Then why? Maybe he, like, knocked himself out and he fell asleep. Or that's why maybe they thought he was in a coma because it had something to do with him falling. Maybe. Is that why? I don't know. Because, yeah, because it was like he is a... um, professional astro travel astro traveler is pretty much what the grandma made it seem like so why did he even need to fall off to and go hit his head to walk? yeah it's like a red herring right you want yeah. they want you to believe as the audience in the beginning that he hurt himself and now he's in a coma for mm, like okay. a hot 40 minutes <laughs> right and then it's like yeah. oh wait hold on he's astro projecting you know yeah 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 uh i do want to say just, I feel like to go back to you talking about this movie and the ghost not being as scary and stuff, it's not super gory. So this is what reminded me. Um, the movie was somewhat of a reaction to Juan, a reaction of Juan's to the success of the Saw series. Juan directed the first Saw film when he stated in an interview with Entertainment Weekly that he was very proud of the movie, but he also felt like the movie, specifically the violence and the gore of it, put some people off and made them hesitant to work with him. Juan then made serious in part to prove that he could make a movie without the level of violence found in the Saw series. Yeah, that's cool. I like a lot of movies that aren't gory. Yeah, but it almost feels like it goes like too far the other direction, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just like this little kid from like the 20s running around the house and stuff. I mean, I know there were other ghosts too, but like... Yeah. The ghosts themselves... Where, like, I complained to Jade. I was like, I know that this is not what I would normally say in this situation. I was like, but this is almost too practical. Like, this is like, you know, like, I wish, actually, they'd get some fucking CGI shit up in this bitch. Like, I just, it's something about the makeup that all the ghosts had that I just was like, I don't know about. It's like too real and it looks fake. As fuck. It just looks like people in costumes. Yes, yes. Because when she was in her bedroom and the guy was pacing and then he paced back and he was in the bedroom and he looked at her, I liked it better when he was outside the window. And then the same thing what you were saying earlier when he was like back behind the, the, um, you know, little curtain thing. You can't see him fully, so it's scary. Yes, the one that when the, the, the taller guy, the bigger guy with the big, you know, light is looking through the house and there's that woman you know really quick with that creepy smile in the door boom it was quick you're like ooh, but then you see her like face to face smiling she shot her family and all of that and then they're there it was 
Yeah, it loses its sting. Especially, yeah. let me just tell you, the second time watching this movie, I mean, nothing was impactful. The The one thing that I feel like was impactful on second watch is the shot with where he's behind the curtain in the baby's room. Because he's obscured and it's creepy. And it, yeah. takes a, it takes a half second to see that he's back there, which is my favorite type of scare, you know? Yeah, I like you that don't slow, see it right away, right? Yeah, that slow build. Oh, whoa, that's been there the whole time, you know? Like, I like that yeah. kind of shit. Yeah, especially when you want to rewind it to see again, if you could catch it. Yes. Ooh, Hereditary did that for me. And yes. The scene in the room, yeah. There is also another time like that in this movie. I don't know if you picked up on it, but the little boy is in, the, is in one of the rooms that she walks through and she just doesn't notice him. Did you notice it? Ooh, nope, I didn't. Okay. I don't and they, think so. They linger on it for just a second mm. right before he starts showing up. But maybe, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, it's like it's too it's like that thing where you see the monster for too long or too clearly too close and it's just I and so anyway, I was like I wish they would fucking do something else here. And then Right after that is where the monster claws out of the the door on the wall. And I was like, that was all like CGI shit. And I was like, nope, I take back what I said. That was bad. That looked bad. Oh, when he's <laughs> chasing him down the hallway? Yeah, yes. I was like, that wasn't it either. I don't know what I want, but it's not this. It is not it. Yeah, and when at the end, the old lady just wasn't scary. She finally took over his body, and I didn't care, because <laughs> honestly, like, the dad, I was really happy the little boy came back, and yeah. I thought the little boy was going to be taken over because of the movie posters. Yeah. They, yeah. All the movie posters make that little boy look super scary, but he wasn't. He was in a coma the whole movie. He yeah. wasn't scary in one point of the movie. Yeah. So I thought, oh, shit, look, he's going to get taken over by that monster, that red faced monster. Oh, my gosh, I'm so scared. And then he came back and I was so happy he came back. And then the dad, you know, was like, ah, I guess he was the old lady. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to see number two. I mean, I will if, you know, we watch it, but it wasn't enough for me to go, oh, no, what happens to this family? Yeah, I don't remember much about the sequels. I've seen them all, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I I feel like maybe one or some of the sequels are better. But again, I could be misremembering because I feel like now watching this the second time, I liked it less than I did the first time. And I th that just to touch on Patrick Wilson's character. I fucking love that guy as an actor. And I really like wanted to like him and especially going into this, knowing that we were sort of watching it from like a Father's Day perspective. <laughs> like I was like, sweet, I'm going to have to pay attention to that. But I just feel like he's like not present, doesn't actually care that much. I mean, obviously he cares about his kids a little bit, but like, I just, I was He's like, really, I'm surprised this was a Father's Day movie because it's really about the mom. Like, yeah. she's really struggles, right? And no, it's about the dad, I guess, because he used to do that shit when he was a kid. But he, he really does. For a moment, there were times where he came back uh, in the first evening and was, you know, being kind. And when, oh, when the little boy fell off the ladder and he was all concerned, that was nice. Then he's just sleeping at the school. It doesn't want to come home because what? It's too much stress or whatever the fuck his problem is. And then um, uh, there was another piece that I'm totally forgetting. Oh, the fact that they moved. So then I was like, okay, well, that's really cool that he believed her enough to move into another mansion. So that's pretty cool. And then... Um, yeah, but it took that fucking bloody handprint. I was like, I wrote down, what the... I, as, as a person, you'd be like, what the fuck is this? And they just cut to a shot of him sleeping on the couch. I was like, what? You'd, you don't yes. have any questions? I felt like there was a lot of that. And I don't know how to explain it. So I wasn't even going to bring it up. But there was a lot of short segments. There yes. was like, uh, he was like, no, we're not doing this anymore. Because the, the lady was like, oh, he's astral traveling to the blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, I'm done. Please don't be done. I'm done. So then he's in the room with his son. There's a picture. I'm not done. There was just a lot of these little quick choppy segments, like, I guess is the only way yeah. I can say it. No, you're right. And that was one of them. She's holding it. Can, are you kidding me? I'd be like, soon as Steve drove up, soon as he drove up, I'm like, 
where the fuck are you? I don't care if we're bonding. I don't care if he hasn't been present. I don't care about any of that marital bullshit at this moment. I'd be like, where the fuck are you? Look, look. And I'd be showing him the bloody handprint. And I wouldn't be like, let's discuss our marriage first. Where have you been? By the way, deal with this. (laughs) Go, go. I did like that little bit of a drop, mic drop moment. I did just personally yeah. from a um, yeah fuck you standpoint. But like yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly it's true. You would be like, oh my god! You'd be like fucking just freaking out. He'd pull up. Where have you been? Look at this. What's happening? I think we're haunted. We gotta move. Like you wouldn't be like, where have you been? Working late again. You've been working late all night, like all week or whatever. Like, no, none of that. You're just fucking, we're out of here. I'd have the shit packed in the fucking lawn if I'm not already gone. You know what I mean? Like, I fucking call an Uber. I don't need a car. Fuck you. We're getting out of here. Okay. Yeah, you're not home. We're done. We're leave a note sticky on the door. Uh, fucking call me. (laughs) Deal with this. We're gone. Being the house and everything in it. (laughs) Just lots of arrows. Deal with this. Deal with this. (laughs) A bunch of arrows. (laughs) I love it. You know what? I did. I did love, love, love when the mom was apologizing. You must think I'm crazy when she's in the new house and his mom was there and his mom was like, none of us can even have any idea what you're going through. Don't apologize. Do what you need to do. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Same brain, dude. I was also like, this is my favorite part of this entire movie. I love this person. I love this character. What what a real moment. Yeah. So good. What a great character. I think they did pull a lot, actually, from Poltergeist. Like, I read a few. I didn't take the notes, so I'm sorry. I'm going to butcher this. But they, they, you know, like, the kid hitting him and having him fly across the room was sort of, like, Poltergeist, mm. potentially inspired. Um, and there was something else that I don't remember. But it pulls a lot of, like, you know, main sort of story beats also not a fan of that movie so i don't know just... i i like that movie i didn't get poltergeist though in this movie well i mean i, I mean well, i thought the the monsters in poltergeist were scary than the monsters in this movie i would ghosts. agree with that i would agree with that yeah um but i mean you can't deny this like this family moves into a house some sh- crazy mm. shit starts happening they call in a medium with a team of people yeah they go to the other side right. oh, like, and then you have to go into the other side to get the kid get you're right it's poltergeist yeah there's a lot of similar oh shit it's things. very similar just and then good i also read something just while i'm thinking about this about like a nod to poltergeist about the steak do you remember this the steak on the counter for poltergeist yep and so they show him with a steak on his face later in the kitchen and i just was like mm, i don't know about i mean I maybe the, the steak crawling with the steak on his face yeah i mean that's kind of maybe like looking for things that are really yeah there. i don't know if you're yeah it seems like you're reaching a little bit but <laughs> God, okay, before I forget it, one of the things that I liked, I did like this about the astral projection. I like the idea that you actually astral project somewhere else in this environment and it takes you a little while to get back to where you are. So one of the things I like is when he goes into the astral plane to get Dalton, they actually end up being back in their old house and they have Mm -hmm. to like, I was like, oh shit, that's the old attic, right? And they have to like get out of the old house and travel fucking who knows how long in the astral plane to the new house Mm -hmm. i like that there's sort of this relationship with like the real world versus the astral plane Mm -hmm. and maybe it's not exact but you can't it's not just like instant you know you can't just be in new places at instant times i I thought that was cool yeah i liked that too and something i won't say what it's something tawny mentioned but i'm not going to say what but i thought the doors to the different areas were very cool and parallel to the other thing if you know you know and if you know you know and if you don't you don't and maybe you will but (laughs) (laughs) so (laughs) big we did talk about it earlier in our podcast and so for those that know you know but i thought that that was interesting i immediately went oh there's something with these doors and astral projection yeah very cool I mentioned everything. I have the go- The ghosts are not scary. The face behind the dad freaking scared the shit out of me. That's what I said. That was the scariest part for me. Um, 
I don't know what it was because I wasn't expecting it, I think. That's what it is. And it's it was because creepy you've never seen anything fast. like that in your yes. life. Like, it's I literally weird. pulled the covers up and went, oh, God, that made me feel gross how scary it was. Like, that was creepy. And I, I was waiting for it to really happen again. And I almost feel like that scene by itself is what props up this movie. And obviously, like, the plot and the idea is really interesting, too. But... I, I like since I've watched this movie, I've looked up that scene several times to rewatch it or look at a frame of it because it happens so in the light of day. Yeah. Normally, shit's not like that. You know, it's like a little bit concealed. It's in the corner. You can't quite make it out, whatever. But no, this is like fucking fucking 2 p.m. in the afternoon. They're having this conversation at the dinner table or whatever. And it's just cuts to him and it's right behind him. Fucking terrifying. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that. And I think it's just a good, like I mentioned, I like there's like, you know, things that they do, just quick scenes or moments or setups that are really, that feel really fresh. That was the scariest part of the movie was that. Yeah. So actually, when Dalton's sheets are found covered in red handprints, it is mistaken for blood, but it's actually red lipstick. The red face demon known as the Lipstick Demon, using his hands to apply his signature red look, leaves the handprints, showing how close he already was to Dalton at, the, at this point in the film. But, like, there's he no way. lipstick all over his face? Do they show that? Is he, like, hoarding lipstick and painting his face red with lipstick? I don't think so. No, I don't think it's... In my opinion, I mean... Take this for what it's worth. But I think what they're saying is they called him the lipstick demon, but they don't mean that as literally. It's more just like this demon leaves traces of red, not because of blood, but because he just is fucking red. Yeah, Does but I don't, I don't leave. Uh, White. Hand yeah, whatever prints? color I am. <laughs> like, I, I know I have, like, a kind of a neutral skin tone, like, all over the place. Like, I wouldn't, all I is. wouldn't, put, yeah, I wouldn't put that two and two together. Oh, his face is red. So when he touches things, he leaves red everywhere. Yeah. Not at all. I wouldn't ever, ever think that. Even, like, I'm thinking of all the demons, of all the scary things of all different colors I've ever seen. I, I, that did not translate. That's blood. I'm sorry that you wanted to, de- to <laughs> I disagree. It. That's not what it was. It was blood. Yeah. <laughs> the lipstick killer. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> he paints his face red or is his face red? No, I think his face is red and they call okay. him the lipstick demon, but it's like a, it's like a nickname. I don't know. They have like weird nicknames for Did all the ghosts. They put Did you know that? Stick on his face, um, like as I'm talking about, like makeup. Oh, maybe. I'm not sure. They it would make sense because it's actually hard to find shades of red. I would know from our Halloween episode where I tried to be uh. Chucky <laughs> and I couldn't find red. So that may be, and then that would make sense. Yeah, but in no way would as I the ever audience, think. You have red skin, and so when you touch things, it turns red. Right. I agree. <laughs> I just wanted you to know. Okay? Okay, thank I just, you. <laughs> I just, I'm just the trivia person now, okay? The fact that they, he was like, people mistake that for blood. Stop. Okay. It's blood. <laughs> it's blood. <laughs> like, just... Excuse me? Don't screw it up. up. Yeah, don't screw it up by saying it's actually not blood. Stop. Stop it. Yeah, you're right. Fuck up. Fuck up. I know you made this, but you're wrong. Okay. People, where else did he make red handprints everywhere? Did he? It just was on the sheets, you remember? Okay, it a so couple this times. does not translate. Okay, well, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. He was reaching on that. I'm with you. I'm with you. He just wanted something else to talk about. I feel like he was in an no, interview you're right. with someone. He said earlier, remember, about the saw shit? He's like, no, 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 that wasn't blood. No, uh, I don't do blood all the time. I can do some was, non-blood. Yeah, he was hypersensitive about blood. Yeah, that's what yes, it was. Yes, that's what it was. It's like, no, that's lipstick. <laughs> you didn't know 
that the demon painted his face red with lipstick? No. How Haven't was I you supposed seen to know that? Lipstick. It's also red. Thank you. <laughs> Thank um, God, though, that he didn't have a scene with that guy painting his face red with lipstick. But okay, so to circle back and kind of solidify my stance on the Beetlejuice situation, okay. I guess walking through the ghosts and kind of going through that other world and stuff was like, remember when the Beetlejuice characters, I forget their names, but the two that died that lived in the house had to go to the afterlife and... I felt the ghosts were very oh, yeah. much like from that Beetlejuice, just the way I, they looked. Yes. You know I what I mean? What you're okay. Okay, cool. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. I totally, just not as good. <laughs> yeah, it's just not as good. Yeah. Yeah. No, I see what you mean. Are you saying? Because they're, they're overdone a little bit, right? Like they're. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very fine line, like. You give glimpses of things and it's scary because you're not sure if you saw what you saw. And so, and it's a lot of the old, old movies like Amityville Horror and stuff. There's, it's, you don't see yeah. what actually is the thing and it's terrifying. So if you're going to show the thing, it's got to be scary. I think that's why I like The Quiet Place so much is because the monster was actually scary and you end up seeing it quite a bit. Yeah. You know, or at least pieces of it. And it still was good, which is really hard to do, especially when you're waiting and waiting and it's building and building and building. And then you see the thing and that thing better be fucking good. Or yes. Literally screws over the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> like Signs was a movie that a lot of people, it, you know, they loved it. And you had these glimpses and it was terrifying. And then once you actually see the thing. It undoes it. Yeah. yeah it undid it for a lot of people. They're like, oh. There's the thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so anyway. Yeah. Um, How did you feel? This is kind of a random question, but I just want to know how you felt about like the music and the, the sound design. I didn't pay. I apologize. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention. So it didn't stick out to me. Like sometimes I write, oh, this bored me or this was weird or this was really good. Um, and so I don't even really recall anything. I did like uh, the mu I, I did like the scene. I like that creepy music that that kid was listening to that kept playing. And she was listening to some music. And then that weird kind of creepy, I don't a even tiny remember Tim. what the song was. Yeah, started playing. Um, I thought that that was really good. But other than that, I don't, I don't know. I don't even remember. I'm shocked that you didn't pick up on this, actually. What? Maybe I did. I just, it's like so noticeable, I feel like. The because baby crying? What, it was a No, noxious. no, like okay. the fucking, the sound design. It's like, the okay, so let me give you some trivia. Number one, yeah. 33 violins were used for the theme music. So like right as this mm -hmm. title comes up, it's super violin heavy and they do violins a lot. And then later in the movie, they get into this like smashing on the keyboard or on a piano type. Mm. So it'll be like clong, <laughs> clong, like shit, just like somebody just smashing on a piano. And it's something that for me, I was like, I fucking cannot with this. And part of it is that they showed her playing the piano, mm -hmm. right? So in my brain, watching this movie, I'm thinking that's actually happening in the scene because they were very adamant to show me that there's a piano in the house. So like, why wouldn't I think that's yeah happening in real life? But I don't think it is. I think it's the sound design because then it continues to happen. I don't Shit, know. I don't remember any of this. I might just be like, <laughs> And the reason I'm laughing is I'm thinking getting Alzheimer's and how you told me everybody gets it. It's like guaranteed. Hundred <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> percent chance you already have Alzheimer's. Chance. Um, maybe I asked for travel to, during that musical portion. I popped right back. Maybe. <laughs> um, let me tell you some more about this. Uh, yeah, tell me. Score tell me. though. On describing the approach of the film's soundtrack, director James Wan explained, we wanted a lot of the scare sequences to play really silent. 
But what I like to do with the soundtrack is set you on edge with a really loud, sort of like atonal scratchy violin score, mixing with some really weird piano bangs, and take that away and all of a sudden you're like, what just happened there? That's a direct quote from James Wan. <laughs> but oh, I want to say- That's exactly what you said. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly how it feels watching the movie, but I feel like it's not in a good way. <laughs> okay, like I'm yeah. sort of like, okay, what the fuck? is happening here it's too it's too much for me personally i just didn't like it anyway on this note can i just tell you my most favorite thing that i've been excited to make fun of until right now i don't know if you picked this up and i just hope to god that you did so i'm not explaining it to you because i might not be able to do a good job he gets there uh where dalton is Mm -hmm. where he's being held captive (laughs) in the further and for whatever fucking reason there's like literally five shots in a row that all have a fucking cross dissolve on them. And I was like, what is this music video shit right now? Do you remember <laughs> this? A cross, like a, uh, like, like a Christian cross? No, no, no. A cross dissolve is like a, it's like, um, maybe you tell me what that is. A cross maybe. dissolve is a transition between two shots Mm-hmm. So you know how okay. like when you just cut and it dissolves like in a yeah. like a PowerPoint presentation yes. when you pick dissolve okay sure I'm sure that's the okay. same thing yeah okay so it's like a fade right like the first shot fades <laughs> like an '80s George Michaels um, yeah yeah I don't <laughs> uh, even video but I, I think just, so I just heard a George Michaels song so I'm thinking of like and it fades like you still see the picture yes. but then the other pictures yes. coming in <laughs> yes the music videos from the <laughs> Like a couple other music videos came into my head, but I couldn't, I couldn't remember who was singing them. But yeah, it's and like it, the eighties or ninety, early nineties. Yeah, 80s, and he, yeah, and a crest dissolve is not a bad thing to have. Like normally, mm-hmm. people end up using it as a normal transition, especially in documentaries, right? Because you've got like, I don't know, and and it's mostly used for the passage of time, right? Like you know, like <gasps> oh yeah, like now we've moved on a few months, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But it happens only like one time in this movie, like five fucking times in a row. It is the weirdest choice (laughs) I've ever seen. And it feels like you're watching a fucking 80s or 90s music video. Like it's like it's like it's like him standing there and then Dalton like laying there. He's like, Dad. (laughs) And it's like back to him. Oh, yes. Do you remember Yes. And now I'm totally And there's also fog machines and shit. And you're like, what is happening? (laughs) Where's Michael Jackson? Where is he? Yes. Yes. I just added the piece where then he's like, he's looking at us in the window and it shows the dad looking, then it shows the guy, and then the dad looking, and then the guy. And then just the whole thing reminded me now of what you're saying is like an 80s video. Yes. Okay. They so you have some, maybe the ghost would start dancing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh, hit him with the shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's exactly right. And you're like, what? You feel like it, there's about to be a musical number. Yeah. You're like... Yeah, a girl with really big hair and like little yes. number coming out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, it makes me kind of like the movie a little more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm sorry, listeners who picked this. We were obviously not feeling it. And I kept thinking the whole yeah. time I was watching this movie, I was like, God, am I just not in a good mood today? Like, what is going on that I'm, I cannot get on board with this? But I think it's just, um, I think it was more impactful the first time. I think that it's a really low budget movie and they also shot it in three weeks and they didn't, I read that they didn't have a lot of time for like retakes. And so that explains a lot because I'm wondering now if they were doing such quick takes, those weird transitions that seem, they seem like they were too quick. Maybe that was also editing. Like maybe there's some piece where they're like, Oh, let's just edit it out. And then it made the, the scene seem kind of like joltingly short. Oh, that's I interesting. I think that's a possibility, yeah. Uh, it doesn't make it, me like it more. Uh, no, but it's but, like the understanding of how you got there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, it's very interesting. But anyway, sorry. We were a Sorry, on everyone. It. We weren't a big fan, but I really appreciate it. I knew I wasn't in a, in, in a bad mood. Like, sometimes I watch mm. a movie like The Lodge. And I'm yeah. like, am I just in a really bad mood? Like, I feel like I should like this movie. This one, I was ready. I was excited because 
my husband and TT where they were settled watching something else. And I was really going to be able to just like, I was in the dark room all by myself. I got all cozy in my bed. I had my mm. water. I was ready. I had my notepad. So I was in a real good mood. Okay. She was ready for it to I be scary. Ready. I had already seen it. So like I, would, I didn't really have any kind of way. Yeah. I mean, like I definitely went into it a little frazzled. I've had like a frazzled week, but I just, I just don't think, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of like plot holes. Like two of the other things that you had brought up earlier that I was like, yeah, there's just questions when you watch this movie. Like I'm really confused about the fact that um, they call in, I don't know if you remember this, but they call in that those guys and mm-hmm. they're like, oh yeah, come on in. And they mentioned, yeah, we're here to like vet up the nut jobs or whatever. We want to make sure that you're for real before we call Elise. Mm-hmm. Well, Elise knew because Lorraine is the one who told them to call her. Yeah. And she's the one who came and helped Josh. So why is there this whole fucking scene about them coming in to try to vet this family when she obviously knew who he was? That makes yeah. no fucking sense now. Anyway. I did like the baby monitor part. I thought that was pretty spooky. Oh, yeah, that's good. You wouldn't immediately run up there because there is interference with baby monitors. So you might think you might. I thought that was believable. And then she, you know, ran up there. Baby was crying again. Baby did a good job. It's a good actress. Cried a lot. Really stressed me. The person who stressed me out the most in this movie is that baby. That baby, man. Just cried oh, the whole time. Oh, gosh, that mom. She's probably just so tired. I also, yeah, I was like, fucking, I'm exhausted, dude. All I need to, like, kids and, take a nap. And then when he was in a coma. Oh, oh my God. What are you going to rate this movie? <laughs> I told I have Felicia. No idea. <laughs> Earlier, I was like, I'm going to go first this time because I keep having you go first. I'm going to go first. It's a 2.5. Oh, no. okay. Okay. Oh, wow. Because I think I still liked it better than The Shining. But I don't like it more, like, as much as, like, a three, the other threes that I've given. And the other movie that I gave a 2.5 is, like, Creep Show and You Should Have Left. And I think I like it on that level. I don't even think it's worth a watch, honestly. Like, if you didn't watch it when it came out, <laughs> that's rude, but it's the truth. <laughs> my, three, my three is the level where I'm like, anything that I give a three and up, I think anybody should watch just to see, you know? for many different reasons. But this one, I think you can skip it now. I don't think I would have said that 10 years ago, but now I'm like, nah, it's lost to the, to the past. <laughs> it's not even that old, but honestly, I just feel like it's pretty forgettable. Yeah. That's where I, I landed. agree. Okay. Okay. So I think you said a two and a half. Yep. I'm going to give it a, a 2.65. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> because, well, let's see. Creep show. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm going to be a normal person. I'm going to give it a 2.75 because that's just exactly what you said. That's what I gave creep show. And that's also what I gave sleepy hollow. Okay. And I think that that that's about equal. Okay. So you gave it a 2.5. I give it a 2.75. Yeah, that feels good. And okay. that's, that's insidious. Thank you guys Sorry, for y'all. having us watch that. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I was not at any point um, like irritated I was watching it. You know, yeah. like I have been sometimes with movies. I, I was watching it and I was I was hoping and there was these little nuggets where I was like, oh, it's going to get good. And I'm like, oh, all right. So next week, next week, we're going to watch a movie from... Our boy Josh with Horror Movie Crew, he recommended this movie. After watching Insidious, I wrote him on Instagram and said, what do you recommend? I want to watch something good. That's what I said. I didn't say that I didn't watch something good or I didn't give any deets on why I was asking. And he recommended Wrong Turn 2021. I don't know if that's the name or is it just wrong turn from 2021? Or is that I think it's just name? wrong turn okay. from 2021. <laughs> wrong turn 2021. <laughs> All right. So that's what we're going to watch next. Uh, Tani is, is sold and we're going to watch it. So yeah. thank you, Josh, for the recommendation. I hope we don't let you down. We may. We're not going to say what Josh said because we don't want to spoil anything for anybody. But he wrote this whole thing about it. And I was like, 
Felicia was reading it to me. Josh, you know, because you sent it if you're listening to this episode. And we were like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm fucking sold. Let's watch it. Yeah, Have he you- wrote a yeah, he wrote a really long thing and um and that was a good point. If you want to know how Josh feels about the movie, <laughs> they <laughs> horror movie crew uh recorded an episode that should be coming out soon. It may be out by the time we post this episode. I'm not sure. I think it's coming out pretty soon. Um so you can go over there and and see what he thinks about it, but uh we won't. He was just convincing either yes. way. Yeah. Have you seen the original, Felicia? Mm-mm. Have okay. not. I have, but it's been a really long time. I don't think I have. Oh. I think I was like 15, 14, something. I don't know. Hmm. I remember it being violent. That's what I remember. But you can find out um, this will be towards the end of June, I think. I don't have a calendar in front of me, sorry. Um, but you can see what other movies we're going to watch for July. We'll post it on the 1st of July. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can support the show by going to our Patreon. You can become a Patreon member and join our Discord to have conversations with us. And if you join the Patreon tiers, there's a free tier, and then we got Patreon tiers too. So you are a different um, color and tier if you join our Patreon in the Discord. So that's exciting. And we also have ex- exclusive content. We over color there. code you. We do. Discord. And there's names. So you can either be cursed or haunted. Very fun. Yup. <laughs> it's legit, dude. It's legit. Very fun. And uh, I'm going to post, I'm going to try to find that uh, music video shit. I'm going to post it in our Discord. <laughs> music video shit. Post from this it. Movie. You need to see it. Everybody needs to see it. Uh, and then what else am I missing? You can you can also so you can, give okay. us a rating review mm-hmm. on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to us on. Sorry, you go ahead. Take it. Take it away, no. Felicia. You can find us on Instagram. That's our main hub. <laughs> yes, it is. Instagram, two chicks in a horror flick. And it's two chicks in a horror flick everywhere. Facebook, TikTok, all of those places except for Twitter. It is two chicks HF. Um, and all the stuff Tawny said. And I forgot where you left off. You were saying something uh, pretty legit right there. No, I think I was done. <laughs> What? And once every <laughs> eight to nine weeks, I log into our Reddit account and I comment on somebody's oh, yeah. post, and I'm like, "Yeah, you guys gotta watch go to Reddit. Antichrist." That's exactly what I do on our account on Reddit because I get all the emails of yeah. people responding to the stuff that you put on Reddit. <laughs> You're probably like, "What the fuck is going on?" You're seeing half of the conversation, just the responses to me. Constant, constant Reddit stuff. Yeah, so yep. Tawny's active on there. Get up in there. I mean, like, barely, like, <laughs> once every nine weeks. <laughs> but, yeah, we love you. You're the best. Oh. Thank you for listening. <laughs> we appreciate it, and we hope that you have such a good night. No nightmares. <laughs> <laughs>